Hello my dear friends, greetings from sunny Cherbourg. As you already know, this is the sunniest city in France, with 360 days of rain, and today is exactly one of those days. This is a boat about which you frequently ask for a review, and as you can see by the reverse slope of the cabin, this is a Garcia, and this is the first hull of the Garcia 60. We will make a short review of the boat, because this particular boat is still in the process of being finalized, and they can't hand it over to the client just now, so we'll go over it just to satisfy your curiosity. And then, when it's finally complete and presentable, we will make a separate review. Let's get this party started. Welcome to another Sasha Goren video and his very best yachting channel. We are in the most yachting city in Normandy, Cherbourg, and we are on board the largest Garcia yacht at the moment, despite the fact that it used to be even bigger. So once again, we're aboard the Garcia 60, and let's take a little peek as to what she's like. Let's go. is an exact copy of Garcia's DNA, nothing extraordinary, and nothing really new. It feels like they just took a 50-second Garcia, and then just made it bigger. As a result, everything here is very big, and look at this enormous jib. They added electrical twists, both on the Genoa and on the staysail. Here are the twists from Selden Furlex. Everything's in stainless steel cases, and everything is very, very large. The deck is really unremarkable as well, except for its large size. It is really impressive in person. We have two lockers here, and you can see that here we have a capstan too, which is really a necessity for such a large boat. Everything else is the same as you saw on the 52nd Garcia, and on the 45th, there are two pairs of cleats on each side, a metal pipe of approximately 22 millimeters on the railings, and everything is very solid. It doesn't have any surprises except for the size. Let's take a look at the aft. It looks like a typical Garcia with a lot of ropes, and here we have a spinnaker pole. Looks like the future owners are probably preparing to go around the world or to Antarctica. Every object is arranged in the same manner, only this time everything is made from thicker iron. Bow pulpit is made from thicker pipes, and an additional winch is placed here, since there are really a lot of ropes to handle. Look at what boom in AV shape. It's very neat and very well made, and it's either made of plastic or carbon. Again, once I'll make a more detailed review, I will pay more attention to this, but now it is quite cold outside. Take a look at this cork deck. Probably 80% of Garcia and Allure models come with a cork deck, and these are from Mari Deck. Garcia's signature mark is the central location of the chain box. Here it is under the mast, and here we have a windlass under this hatch. See, they even made ventilation for it, so that when the wet chain comes in, the water could evaporate and the chain wouldn't rust. There is a scupper here, and the windlass by Lomar Company is here as well. It's a 14mm chain that falls into a box right here, at the base of the mast. But let's move on now. Pay attention to the Genoa track, I think it is very well sized. This element alone demonstrates that this is a sailing boat, and not a motor sailing one. There's an interesting arrangement of hatches, as you can see there are four identical, evenly disturbed hatches. They will provide very good ventilation and very good natural airflow. 
Look at this Rigman Boom Vang. It's huge, but with a coating like this one, it looks more like a Lamborghini. Incredible. Pay attention to how the leads are done. There's a German system in place for a main sheet. There is also a V-shaped boom and a carbon fiber mast from Axon. Damn, this is very impressive. Stays are made of pure metal. Take a look. It's not a cable. It's a metal rod and everything is made to be very, very reliable and firm. And moving on, look at the length of this handrail. Two and a half meters, if not more. It's a long one. Well, you do need to hold on to something while you're walking on the deck. The cabin was made a little differently this time. It reminds me of Allure's 52 when they did the similar spray hood, and here all the contours resemble that model. Flexible solar panels are placed on top. Since they are flexible, you can easily walk on them, especially when you're working on the mainsail. Can you guess what this part reminds me of? Exactly, the ML model, especially with this front opening windshield. It has four plugs, and everything looks very impressive and thoughtful. This part is made of plastic, but everything else is pure aluminum, natural, and very durable. A large number of leads go through here, because we have three sails on this boat, and we need to somehow operate them with the help of ropes. Let's take a look at the cockpit. The cockpit is huge, probably as big as on the Garcia 52, very spacious. All the corners are rounded, and the design is very similar, so you really won't get lost, since it's similar to every other Garcia. Look at how the steering wheels and binnacles are made. There's a very interesting solution for the handrails here. Notice how they have three attachment points. They are literally dead bolted and connected together with the console. I won't be opening the console for you just now. Let it be a little intrigue. Now let's take a look at this. There's a fairly decent platform and an arch for swimming. Everything is absolutely the same as on the 52nd Garcia. A retractable ladder, which is a very interesting solution. So the tramp is hidden and not on top as it usually is. There are two lockers below, here, in the deck, and two lockers on the sides, probably for the diving cylinders. These are semi-dry, semi-wet lockers, and although they have a sealant, I would not risk storing something precious and important there. Take a look at the size of these solar panels. Give me a second and I can probably tell you how many watts each of them generates. Okay, so each of them is 390 watts, so in total it's almost 1200 watts. And here's a large bimini tent, a sizable thing, and it covers the boat to somewhere about here. Guys, look at the size of these winches. They really look more like the drums than a winch. All winches are electrical. The leads are right here under the Cummings engine, and then connect to the winches here, and the same goes for the second winch. In total, we have six winches, and they are all placed together here, and is the control zone. The lockers for the ropes are very well made, and this is from where you control the movement of the whole boat. Here is where the rest zone begins. Again, I apologize for the mess, since the workers left a lot of tools lying around, and the boat is still being remodeled. If they're telling you a certain deadline, always add three to six months on top of that, it will be the actual deadline. Take a look at the spray hood. It very much looks like something you'd expect to see on the large yachts. The room is decorated with fabric, and they already installed lamps like on the Fountain Paget. For this area here, you can install a separate tent, so this part can be completely tented. And if you'd like to go all in, you can even get some heaters in here. But let's take a good look at this table, because this is definitely a piece of art, straight from the books. Look at how beautiful it is, both in the folded and unfolded states goodness i very much like it i like everything except this black color it looks good when it is freshly coated and cleaned but once a little bit of dust appears it will require cleaning again but all in all this table deserves the praise a compass is placed here so that people can still take a look at it sometimes this device is undeservedly overlooked and it serves more as a decoration but at night it glows in a beautiful red color and looks like a fantastic addition to the interior all the hatches are evenly installed. I'm not sure what this is for. I haven't really been on this boat that long. There are plenty of seats for everyone, and the benches are very spacious. Take a look at this interesting solution for the boxes here. They are made of natural wood, with these cute little rugs inside. 
A simple yet a very nice touch, and the boxes on both sides have these rugs. Here you can store a lot of useful or not so useful things. Again, your favorite doors, you can see what size these doors are, and in my comments everyone likes them. Everything here is made of fabric, there's an additional window so that you can keep an eye on the sales, and all in all very decent execution. Let's go inside this room now. Inside is the usual Garcia cabin, and you won't see any actual surprises here. But it's big, it's well planned, and everything here is done in the same style and with the same furniture as in Garcia 45 and 52. Unfortunately, the shipyard is manufacturing the boat only with this color inside. It's not bad, but when you buy a yacht for two and a half million euros, you'd probably want some more options. But in the meantime, everything is very solid. There are plenty of handrails, and they are wrapped in leather, so they're very nice to the touch. And what have we got here? Here is the kitchen, and a galley with an induction oven. What can I say? It's very convenient, and the fact that the kitchen is a little lower is a good choice for this area, because it doesn't take up much needed cabin space, and is virtually invisible from up there. I like the fact that the whole space has been used to the fullest. And this part of the countertop acts like a stopper, yet this place behind it can be used as a shelf, it's very clever, and I approve. So there are plenty of shelves and cabinets here, but it's the best decision for this kind of boat, and every inch of the space is used for something, which is very clever in the case of the monohull boat. And the radio beacon is hiding right here, which is a great place to have it. I can stand here just fine, and nothing restricts my movements. But at the same time, you can hold on to something when the boat is pitching. We have here a British stove, made of polished stainless steel, and I think it costs like my wife's car. It is an induction stove, and you'll notice that more and more people are moving away from gas usage on board. Here is a sink, nothing unusual about it, and here we have an additional refrigerator, which is not yet completely installed, a dishwasher, and here is another refrigerator. Here's a microwave oven as well, it's very well embedded in this area. I don't like microwaves myself, but it's very well integrated. The rest are the cabinets, shelves, and etc. The boat was sold by my Dutch colleague, by the way. The galley is very well tailored, and I like it. Let's go back inside the cabin, and once again allow me to mention that the boat is still being worked on, and there are no pillows on some of the seats, but since you asked for a tour, here we are. The signature feature is the heater, as you can see they are gray now, and above me you'll notice these four portholes. They come with nets, by the way, nets and blinds, and like the rest of the boat, they are very well done. Everything is done in the Garcia style, not for posh wannabes, but for real, stern sailors. I wouldn't say the cabin is particularly spacious, it doesn't have a wow effect. It's the typical Garcia, with a cabin large enough for a 60-foot yacht. On the left side, you'll see the chart table and a control throttle by B and G. A very popular brand, and it's used in many boats. The table has become smaller in comparison with the 45th and 52nd Garcia. The tabletop itself is covered with leather. Again, there is nothing super duper unusual about it here, and this fashionable slope of the cabin, along with the double glazing, doesn't surprise anybody. As you can see, the table is folded right now but it can also be unfolded whenever you want, just like the table in the cockpit. Here are some kind of connectors, and that's how big this table can be. The designer who developed these tables deserves a high five, just incredible, it's a very cool solution and I really like it. So this is how it looks like, and you can easily throw here a decent party or just have some dinner, it's a great place to be. So my friends, let's go and take a look at the bow cabin. Here we have the heater again, it's very large in my opinion, and there's even a tiny library here. There's a control panel for all the electric drives too. The boat is de-energized, and I can't show you how everything works in here, but this is a laundry room. There's a washer, a dryer, and a hanger to hang all sorts of things, so this is pretty much it. And here's the bow cabin itself, again sorry for the mess in here, there are all sorts of pillows laying around, this is not a master cabin, but a guest cabin, and in here you'll find a tiny table, or rather a women's boudoir. 
and that is surprising to me personally, but you can even take out all the boxes, which is very cool. Here we have a wardrobe, or a pantry, whatever you want to use it for. And here is a very decent bathroom with a separate shower, and again, here's the gray heater, along with a heated towel rail, and a large electric toilet. So you can see that already the Garcia is becoming more of a posh boat, but the size obliges you to fill it to the brim. And here we have a chain box hidden, this is where the chain rumbles once it's being pulled out of the water. So my friends, what do you think is in here? What could it be? For me, it's the place I spend the most time inside. And in here guys, we have the engine room. Damn it, it's a full-blown department, if you ask me. Just take a look at this engine room. Guys, it's just very, very beautiful in here. Hydraulic pump and a compressor. A sizable Cummings generator. These are the chargers. Whatever it is that you want, you will find it here. It's a whole engine room, very much like one on a warship. I was on a submarine once, so it seems very similar, and it's full of all sorts of interesting things. Let's go back to this room, closer to the stern, and what do you think we have here? Is it a storage room? Well, you almost guessed it, because here we have a storage room that can be used as a cabin, so two for one in this case. There is a king-sized bed here, and the room is located under our dining area. Two people can easily be accommodated here, or it can be used for storage. There's a decent amount of natural lighting, and a good quality door. Let's see what we have here, as you can see it's a separate day toilet. It is manual in use, and this is the only manual toilet on the boat. So in total the boat has two bathrooms, and one additional toilet like this. And now let's jump into our master's cabin. The majority of changes in the largest Garcia model are most likely hidden here. Come on, let's take a look. Again, I apologize for the mess. The boat is still in the works, but as you can see, it's really a big cabin. It really impresses you with its size and the amount of furniture. It's quite an interesting design and everything is very well thought out. The height of the room is really average. It's somewhere around two meters in this part of the room and you can place a TV here on this side. Here's the heater, same as we saw before, and what surprised me most about this room is what's behind this door. What do you think it is? I thought it was a closet of some sort, but in fact, it's the bathroom. I don't know why the owner went with this option, or whether it should be constantly open, because the door will constantly be in a way. But this was the owner's request, so they probably needed it. In general, the bathroom looks very well made. There's the electric toilet, the heated towel rail, and the dedicated shower. Well friends, this is it for the tour of this boat. Once again, I apologize for the mess, but the boat is still in the works, and since there were so many requests to show it, I could not resist. We will be able to make a better video when it is completed. If you want to see it for yourselves, be sure to visit Cherbourg, and we will show it to you. We can probably do a tour of the shipyard, and you will see smaller yachts here as well. In terms of price, the future owner paid 2.5 million euros for this yacht. But prices have gone up now, and I think that in a while a boat like this will cost at least 3 million euros in this configuration. Don't ask me about the production time, because it will be very long. However, if you subscribe to our channel, we may be able to do something about it for you, but only for our dear subscribers. Thank you for sticking around to see this short review, and I'll see you later. Be sure to hit the bell button. And glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes, and I'll see you at sea.